everybody. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so wait, so I, I just need to jump right into some of the questions about this episode. First of all, and this could be for anybody really, you know, this season, instead of splitting up the season with, you know, two different stories, this is kind of a through story. How is that different for all of you? One for the writing process and also for the actors. Uh, well, for us, that's kind of what we did the first couple seasons, um, and then uh, it just felt like it was time to break that cycle. Uh, it felt like we just wanted to, you know, it's a creative, it's a creative endeavor, so we're always trying to keep it fresh. And, and there are a lot of the stories we're telling this year, which we sort of cooked up in between season five and six, lent themselves to this kind of extended storytelling. And, with the first half of the season, a lot of stuff is kind of tied up and, and resolved, but it is part of this larger story that now you're seeing continue. Okay. For Colin and Jen, did you guys feel any different with shooting the season? Um, I didn't, it didn't feel tremendously different um, because we did, you know, like Adam was just saying, there were certain things that were tied up and resolved at the, at the sort of first half finale, and then um, the second half, even though we're continuing some of the conflicts and themes, it has its own feel to it. I think. Yeah, I agree with Jim. <laughs> and I agree with Colin. I agree with myself. <laughs> and I'm going to get this out of the way because I know it's something on everybody's mind. Any, any word on season seven? Do we know anything? It's a show about hope, so, you know. Here's, here's what I would say. Uh, we are all ready for season seven. The question is, are you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Is, hope loudly. Yeah, I mean, it does rest on you guys a little bit because I know you're already great tweeters and you sh shout it out on social media. Just keep doing that because the network does pay attention. I know that. Um, we get we get quite a bit more information on Gideon in this episode. Um, what, what's coming? Because it, we know war is coming, but is uh, Gideon dies is, is, in the next one between episodes? Is, is it all? Is that a spoiler? Is, uh, don't don't tweet that. That's a joke. That's a joke. But is it our heroes versus Gideon, or does Gideon have her, his own tribe? Of There's other levels to it. Gideon, obviously, um, I think from seeing this episode, becomes an important factor in what's going on. But in the next few episodes, other things start to reveal yeah. themselves. The, thi the thing that I, that I find interesting uh, from watching this one is you see that um, Gideon seems to be bringing Rumpel and Belle together. Um, and I think that for when we realize that Rumpel, you know, may have made some bad choices in his life, but he doesn't want his child to, um, and Belle sees that, I think that was a real fine moment. So I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, that family dynamic play out. Safe to say there's some Rumpel fans in the audience? <laughs> Um, I, I love that. I love any time we get to flashback and we get to see some of Emma, Emma's origin when she was a very little girl. <laughs> Jen, how's that for you? Because um, I don't know if you know all that information or it's stuff you're learning as we learn in these episodes. It's a little bit of a combination. There's things that we've talked about over the years and kind of from the beginning, and then as things unfold, then some of it's a surprise, and, and some of it is like, oh yeah, yeah, we talked about that. It's good for you because you get a day off when they do that. <laughs> it's like being oh, there and makeup. not being there. That is makeup. <laughs> People don't realize that was Jen. Three hours. I worked so hard on that episode. <laughs> she had to lose three inches. <laughs> well, somebody who gained a few inches for this episode. <laughs> you have to have to get that nice little belly you were sporting there. That wasn't actually me, that was somebody else. Um, yeah, no, that was fun to play. Uh, I almost wish that there was a full series just about that. He really liked it, oh, like, really, really liked it. He had way too much fun. Was there a lot of work that went into the look of what this hook looked like? His hair and everything? Yeah, 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 it was a whole process and, uh, you know, I have to give a big uh, shout out to to the hair and makeup team on the show for pulling it together. Because that's, normally you use prosthetics and that's, you know, a very time sort of uh, sensitive thing. And, you know, on this, the, the makeup team managed to, to do all that from scratch just with like stippling and with uh, sort of putting a, um, what do you call it, a latex. As Colin person. basically looked like he was in a spa the whole time. He's like laying back in the chair, and there's like four women fussing over him and doing all this stuff to his face. And... Yeah, it was great. <laughs> but it was great to see some familiar faces in this episode. Sean McGuire's back. I know he's a good buddy of yours, Colin. How, how is it, Adam and Eddie, first of all, when you do bring back these characters, whether it's Robin Hood or Pinocchio, what are kind of the rules? So it kind of doesn't take away from the current story, but you kind of honoring the past as well. You know, it's it's always about 
what's the story we're telling for our characters in, at this moment, at this point in time, and and then you want to fold in characters naturally. So it, it's 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 about how you know how does August or Robin Hood relate to what you know um, Regina's going through or Emma's going through, and then you know, I think like for tonight August, it was you know we know that he came through the wardrobe with Emma. So for us, um, having her go back to Pinocchio and having him build it, that was like, we, that to us felt like that's exactly what would happen. And it, and it felt like a nice bookend with seeing young August and seeing how they've been sort of tied together. I mean, we've seen that since the first season, that those, those two characters have a history. For Colin and Jen, how was it for you guys when some of these actors you may not have seen for a couple seasons come back and it's just kind of starting up again? How's that? Um, well, it was fun. It was fun for me because I never got to, to work with Ian. I that was the first time I'd done anything with him. So it was uh, <laughs> it was that that day was hilarious because uh, I sort of I didn't really know exactly what what I was going to do, and uh, I think that I think Ian and, and Jen were like, what what is happening? It was fun because I was like this old fat. Crazy. It was initially like hard to get through the scenes without laughing. No, they're, they're literally daily. Daily is amazing. Just, like, can't control herself laughing. I did the, Old I did, Hook like, is, is the best. Did we have dailies to be like laughing to Oh, it's I, that tons was of us. Like, laugh laugh, yeah. There's one. There's one where I had to pick up the uh, chisel. Yeah. And sort of go. Uh, you know. And, uh, <laughs> we did one take where and it was really slippy. There was lots of leaves and stuff like that. Well, it was and raining I, and it was muddy and yeah. And I fell over. And I was like, this <laughs> <laughs> thing, just, and I, I actually thought she was going to wet herself. <laughs> I mean, you picture it. It's really funny. Because he couldn't really get up. Because of all. I like him because in his mind, he's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm awesome. You know. He doesn't, he doesn't quite get that he's old and fat. That's what makes it so great. Hopefully we'll see Old Hook again in some oh, form. God willing. <laughs> well, I want to need a knife. Never mind. I do want to ask about Robin Hood a little bit because the fact that he's going to now be in our world. Is this truly a different Robin Hood or could there be memories or anything that we might see down the line? I think those are questions that are asked by the characters and on the show as we go forward. So it's, he's a different Robin Hood, but you know, there is... It's definitely a different Robin Hood from a, a different universe with a different backstory. Because that's not confusing at all. <laughs> Actually, it's not. If you watch the show from the start, it's not confusing. Like, we follow all of this back and forth. Um, is there anything to the fact that Regina points out that he hadn't aged in that world? Is that is that a, a clue of some kind? Uh, I... <laughs> you, I... I feel like you had a much more creative answer. I really don't. Okay, uh, to us, uh, I would say we're setting up the question of, of why, you know, um, he came back in this one, right? You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's uh, yeah, no, for us, it, it's, it's, he didn't age, he definitely is a different person, and the question is why and what will happen to him, and so we're setting up a different kind of story that will play on the next few episodes. No, I mean, there's clearly something special about this guy, so I'll leave it at that. I feel like I'm getting tan up here. I never, that is so right. I love it. Uh, Jen, it was great to finally see that fight with Gideon, since we've seen flashes of it since the start of the season. How was it to shoot, and is that sword as heavy as it looks? Uh, well, the real one is, but that's, we don't use that the whole time. The props department does an amazing job of taking care of us that way, because there's only so long you can do that before your arm's about to fall off. Um, but it was, yeah, it was nice. I mean, we built that for so long, and uh, my hand shook for so long <laughs> um, that it was, it was cool to, to finally have the, the climax of, of that story to, to really get to that point. And I feel like, you know, as always with these guys, they really earned that, that conflict, you know? Was it always Gideon in the cape, or did you guys ever catch about that? Or was there sometimes a stunt guy in there? <laughs> <laughs> Old hook. No. Uh, <laughs> But uh, his liver gave up before he could do the scene, so we had to give it to Gideon. Uh, you know, we always had Gideon. I would love that in the, if, in the end of the season, if yeah. you suddenly realize actually it was old fat hook it was in there. I've mean, I I said too much about it. That's the, that's the spin off. <laughs> old hook, he moves to Palm it's Beach. A, it's a sitcom. It's a half hour sitcom. I'd watch it. Well, 
you also revisit the feather. Um, the, I remember you guys when that first appeared a while back. You saying that would come back, and we did see in this episode. Is, was that was this the right place for that? Were you always kind of eyeballing this this part of the story to bring that back? Yeah, I mean we, you know, uh, believe it or not, have been planning this for a long time, and uh, so it, it was part of the construction of the season, which is why the feather was prominent in the season premiere, and then why it's brought back here. Yeah. Well, I think you know, uh, in the beginning, we wanted Regina to accept the idea of faith for the first time. She didn't need to see the feather to say that I believe Robin Hood moved on somewhere better, um, but here it was a different kind of sign, and it was the sign that she should be hopeful in, in uh, bringing this guy back to Storybrooke, even though he's a different, different Robin Hood. From, from this point forward, how is Captain Swan doing? Are they, are they going to be solid, get through whatever's coming next? I can tell you this, if you like Captain Swan, uh, then this second half will be uh, some good Captain Swanage. <laughs> Unless, of course, they break up or one of them dies. <laughs> Which could happen. Because we have old hook waiting. We don't even... Like, you have a spare now that everyone's excited about. So it's like, Emma, old hook. I mean, I have died four times already. So. Yeah, so what, what's another one? Yeah. It really depends on how you define good. We could just put old hook with dark swan. <laughs> well, that's the spin, that's the sitcom. It's like, cheers meets... Once upon a time. It's a lot of black leather. <laughs> but for Colin and Jen, can you talk a little bit about what we're going to see moving forward? Tease a little bit. The yeah, I mean, the, the, what's been really fun and what we've always really enjoyed with um, the writing on the show for for um, Captain Swan has been that um, they have let us be together and see what that looks like, you know, instead of taking us apart and together and apart together. Um, so we've now been together a long time and we've moved in together and so there's this fun exploration of what that means and when the stakes are higher and, and when you start to deal with real relational issues and um, some of the deeper concerns in a relationship start to come to the surface and um, so there's ups and downs with that you know and it's been really fun to be able to dive into that stuff and figure out what that means and you know kind of do all that. Yeah. <laughs> See why I keep him around? <laughs> oh, that's, that's, she's actually right. Uh, uh, sort of, you get to see what it's like for them dealing with being in a real relationship, I guess. Um, so, but it's still a storybook. So, <laughs> even, even at that, something crazy is always going to happen. Is there any more flashback or backstory coming for Hope? Because those are always great moments as well. Yeah, right? Am I remembering right? Yeah, yeah. there are. Um, do, you, do you guys want to talk about it? Or do I to... I'm having trouble remembering where we are in the season. You can see how important I am to it. So. <laughs> I can't imagine we wouldn't be. Well, you do, I can say that you do get to see uh, more interaction between Charming and Hook. And... Uh, the greatest bromance I've ever lived. <laughs> So you get to see um, you get to see their their interactions and, and you know what kind of hijinks uh, and shenanigans they get up to. Uh, uh, you might get to see Hook sing. Yeah. Wait a minute, you know who else might get to see sing? Emma. Oh yeah. We may be doing an entire. Uh, in fact, the rumors are true. We're doing a musical. <laughs> but it's going to be silent. With words. No, we're doing a musical. Yeah, we are. I'm guessing this is something that hasn't been shot yet? Uh, no. Shortly. Soon. Okay. Yeah. Does that make you guys excited? Nervous? So you... excited. We're really excited. Yeah. I think... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, was that too vehement? Um, we talk about it a lot. Like... Yeah, no, we have talked about it. We are really, really excited to do it. And uh, I think out of any show, I think Once is the type of show that you can really sort of embrace doing a musical episode and make it as musical-esque as you, uh, you know, as you, uh, as you can. Um, because of the worlds and the world jump, yeah. time jump, you know, all the things that we do that are a part of the mythology of the show, it, it leaves a lot of space to, to be able to make the music a part of the mythology in a really cool way. And, and all of us, I mean, most of the cast comes from some kind of musical background and, um, 
you know, we've been doing this for six years now, and so it's kind of fun to have something completely new to look forward to. So we're all excited about it. Were there any gems as far as the cast, like who you maybe didn't know could sing, but have been like secretly holding that back? We haven't filmed it yet. <laughs> I know. Uh, I, you know, it, as, as Jennifer said, they all, a lot of them come from a, a musical theater background, so we weren't weren't that surprised that that and that that kind of was one of the, the inspirations for it was you know um, hearing them sing Happy Birthday once a year. <laughs> no, but they really most of the cast really can sing. You know, Colin plays guitar. Jennifer can sing. You know, Josh Dallas did musical theater in London forever. So, you know, we thought let's show them off. Can you say whether these are original songs or will they be some more familiar with? They're original songs. All original, okay. So I'm excited, okay. You guys are excited, right? This is amazing. We're going to get audience questions in just a second. Um, so you talked a little bit about this. It's a kind of a new start for Rumpelstiltskin and Bell. Um, is it still going to have some bumps in the road? Because they're, I mean, they're going to get the TV show, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, no. Yes, um, I think they're going to have. You know, Gideon is uh, it, Gideon's going to cause a lot of problems for everyone, and I think that is going to be tough. You know, emotionally, and considering he keeps trying to kill Emma physically. Uh, it's like a thing. It keeps happening. Yeah. People keep trying to kill you. It's so weird. <laughs> I never tried to kill her. Never. You haven't tried to kill me. No, I tried to jab you with a sword. <laughs> to be fair, you left him on a beanstalk to die. But that was season two. We're bygone. That was so long ago. Oh, true love. <laughs> I did get a lot of Twitter questions from a lot of you here and a lot of people that aren't here, but um, one that a lot of people were asking, Jennifer, are we seeing you in the red jacket anytime soon? The red jacket coming back? I'm sure. I mean, it always comes back. That's We always we sort of try to plan these, like, you know, cycles of when she's in the red jacket. We actually just built a new version of the red jacket that is warm. <laughs> so really the issue with the red jacket is that <clears throat> winter in Vancouver is not red jacket weather. Um, so we kind of put our heads together this year and found a way to have her sort of like warrior red but in wool with, uh, like, lined with warm things. <laughs> but the red jacket will appear. But of course, I'll come back, yeah. Uh, one more question before we get to audience. Any other familiar faces that we're gonna see down the line that you wanna talk about or tease or anything? Yes, we are going to be seeing Tinkerbell, uh, Ariel. Um, we're gonna see more of Aladdin and Jasmine and get their backstory. Oh, we're gonna uh, we're going to get the Black Fairies backstory. So, <laughs> even though you've never met her, well, maybe they met her. I don't know. I didn't know that actually happened. Ooh. <laughs> Black Fairy. Um, well, I have a feeling you guys probably have some questions. Hi. Hi. Hello. This is very exciting. This is my favorite show, so thank you. Oh. Oh, oh yeah! That's awesome. Very cool. Awesome. It's even better because it's my birthday, so. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Thank you. My question for you is, what was your favorite story, like with the whole show, like the Zelina or time travel or what? Was your it's it's hard to say because it's it's you know as a writer you you're, the new story <laughs> should always be your favorite because you're always trying to push yourself to be better than the one before it. So, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to say, like, oh, it's like saying, what's your favorite child? Um, you know, there are, there are arcs, you know, that, like, it was so much fun to write Old Hook. And then in the next episode, um, you'll see Colin and Josh have one of the world's greatest bromances. And you're like, this is my favorite episode. Then the one after that, you're like, this is my favorite. So I think for us, the minute we say, actually, I like the one before this one better is when we have to quit. So we're quitting. Good night. <laughs> All right, next question. Hi. Hello. Um, my name is Nia. I'm a film major here at SCAD. I didn't actually think I'd get a question, so this is pretty exciting. <laughs> You've Hi, Adam. One. Uh, I know it's a great from, shirt. I, I know you're from Twitter. Like, you like my shirt? Thank you. Uh, that's an awesome shirt. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so um, I'm pretty, I do 
lot of the Twitter and stuff. Um, and my question was about social media, because as writers in 2017, you, you get a lot of social media, and the fans are very intense, like both positively and negatively. And you see that a lot. So I was just wondering if, like, how that affects your writing process, because it's not really something we've seen in the past. You know, it, it's, it's less about the writing process than it's like, it's, it's amazing to feel that kind of intensity because it's, whether it's negative feedback or positive feedback, it's passion and it's, it's an engagement with the show and that's what we want. We want to feel like we're writing and creating a show that is inspiring people and getting them to, to really think about it and feel things. And, and it's, it's an unbelievable way to, to get feedback in real time that was never around before. Um, so it, you know, it's, 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 it's really cool, I think, you know, um, as, you know, as far as the writing goes, it's, you know, we love to listen to fans and to hear their, their thoughts, it's, it, but you can't write by poll or by, you know, being lobby. Or, or you know, often when, when, you know, the episode's aired and people are like, you better, it's like, we've already done five after, it's not like we're shooting this live. Um, <laughs> But for us, the greatest thing is to have such a dedicated fan base. The, the Oncers are just so inspiring to us, and the fan art, and the community, and the people that come up to us and say they've met friends and from it, and that's what we love, because, you know, I don't know if you know this, but there's 200 million TV shows out there right now, so to have one where people, season six, are still tweeting like this is amazing. Yeah, and I, I feel like it's, it's great to be able to interact and be able to talk about the show and what we're doing and why we do things and how we do it. But I think Eddie's point is something that, that's often hard to communicate, which is we started this season talking about it last March. Like, and we outlined so much of what it is and where it's going and what we're doing in the spring of last year so that like to talk about what we're doing on a plot level or episode to episode is just, it's very difficult for us to do because we're, we're already, you know, way down the line from that. So it's more, it's, it, it's, it's great to be able to talk about process and, and, and why we do things, but that other stuff is difficult. Yeah, it's great to have a passionate fan base, and I think the thing I'd also say is, you know, be kind out there as well, to each other, you know? Um, it's a TV show. So uh, it's great that everyone has different characters they like, but it's like this was a show written by two people who wanted to give hope to the world, not have somebody be shouted down because they don't like something, you know? This is a show about hope, it's about kindness, and it's about respecting everyone, and if you don't like their ship, that's okay. You can disagree with them, but you don't have to be personal and you don't have to hate them. I love when you tweet, Jim. I love when everyone tweets. I don't, I don't like it that much. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Loic. I'm a performing arts uh, major here at SCAD. Um, my question is directed to Mr. Hook here. Um, and this is probably true for a lot of characters in this show, but how is it to portray a character that's already so well known and has been portrayed so so many times in the past. Like, do you draw inspiration from previous portrayals, or do you try to, you know, make him your own character? How do you go about doing I think with uh, this version of Hook, I wanted to, to make him, and, you know, a lot of it too is down to the way that Eddie and Adam and the writers write the character, but I very much wanted him to be very, very different from any incarnation before. Um, because, because I'm not good enough to do it as well as Dustin Hoffman did his version of it. Do, do you know what I mean? I don't, yeah. Like, I'm actually not, I'm sort of being a little bit flippant, but it's, to do something, that was a version that was almost perfect in its incarnation, so you have to try and uh, create something else. And it was a big, uh, we talked about it in interviews earlier on, it was a big sort of, uh, not fear, but worry for me to take this iconic character, and because the season that I came in, uh, they denounced at Comic-Con that Hope was coming in, and it was a lot of, a lot of pressure because he is an iconic character and my version is so drastically different uh, from from what I'm just what picturing Emma with the uh, Dustin Hoffman version <laughs> <laughs> a really different story <laughs> but it's uh, what was great about it is as a as a performing arts major or as an actor is to have to sit there and decide how am I going to create this character 
what am I going to do that's going to be different? How am I going to... Because Captain Hook that I play is very, very different than Colin O'Donoghue as a person. So you have to create a character then. And that's, I think that that's the best part about what we do as actors, is to sit there and sort of orchestrate and think about how you go about ma making a, a, a character or a role and how you sort of, how are you going to make it believable? How am I going to make it that this one-handed 300-year-old pirate is going to actually be relevant in to a modern-day audience, you know what I mean? And how, 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 how do you do that? And what voice, what voice are you going to have? Because I originally, we talked about maybe even me having my Irish accent. And, you know, we sort of decided on having the British one and, and sort of, and then I was like, well, I don't want it to be, you know, very, very like this, very English, do you know what I mean? I didn't want it to be like that. <laughs> uh, so you have to, I had to figure out what kind of voice is he going to have? And his, his voice is like, Hook's voice is much deeper than my normal speaking voice, you know what I mean? And it's all that kind of stuff. And then the costume helps you sort of stand a certain way and all that kind of stuff. So that's the, that's that's what I think is fun about it. You're forgetting the most important part. The eyeliner? The eyeliner. <laughs> eyeliner. So unfortunately we only have time for one last question. Hi, I'm Marissa. I'm a visual effects major. If there is a season seven, do you think there's a possibility we might see Moana and Maui appear in Storybrooke? Uh, Moana is always a possibility. Maui. We Did love her. Maui. Ma Maui, the Maui uh, would be hard to replicate in Vancouver, as Jennifer's jacket dictates. <laughs> Uh, but we, you know, I think the, the great thing is we have a great relationship with Disney and, um, you know, we're always interested in bringing on characters that we think would be fun on the show. So absolutely, that's possible. I'm, I'm not sure we can get The Rock to do it, but... Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, but if we, he wants we, to... But if he does, yeah. We, we, we love the movie. What, what's that? Fingers crossed. Uh, Fingers crossed. All right, well, thanks, Dad. Thank you for being here.